Welcome to Ava's Books. Princess Grace by Mary Hoffman Grace had wanted to be a princess for as long as she could remember. Most of her favourite stories were about princesses, like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and the one who couldn't sleep on the pea. Some became princesses with the help of spells like Cinderella or Beauty. Grace loved to act out those stories, making her nana play the fairy godmother or telling her cat papa he had to be the beast. So imagine Grace's excitement at school when her teacher said there would be a competition to choose girls from her class to be princesses for the day. There's going to be a parade with all the local schools, said the teacher to collect money for charity. And we will all have a float with a special queen. Ours has been chosen already from the top year and it was her idea to pick two princesses from our class. Well, after that, all the girls were twirling in imaginary ball gowns and saying that they were bound to be the parade princess, especially Natalie. My daddy always calls me his princess she said. So I'm used to being one. This made Grace sad for two reasons. She didn't like Natalie and she didn't have a daddy of her own, at least not one who lived with her. The boys were pretty disgusted with the whole idea. Princesses are boring, said Kester. Grace rushed home, very excited to tell Ma and Nana the news. So I can be a princess, Ma? She asked. Will you make me a costume, Nana? Of course, honey. If you can tell me what a princess wears, I can try and make it. And of course you can dress up as a princess, Grace. But that doesn't mean that you get chosen for the parade, said Ma. So Grace rushed off to get out all her storybooks to see if she could find what princesses wear. Her best friends, Amy and Maria, came round to help. They didn't want to be princesses as much as Grace did because Maria didn't like being looked at and Amy didn't think her mother would have time to make her a costume. It must be pink and floaty with a train, said Grace. And a crown, said Amy. And a wand, said Maria. Nah, that's fairies, said Grace. Wings then, suggested Maria. Fairies again, said Grace. Or angels. So, what am I making? asked Nana, confused. I don't know if it's a dress for a Christmas tree fairy or a bridal gown. It's a bit like all of those, I think, said Grace. Oh, I don't know. It just has to be very pretty. There's more than one way to be pretty, said Nana. I suppose it depends on what she does, said Amy. I don't know. What do princesses do, Nana? You tell me, darling, said Nana. But no one could, except for wearing beautiful clothes and looking pretty. That does not sound so interesting, said Grace. She liked having things to do. Maybe Casta was right. You know what? I think you may have been reading the wrong stories. Why don't you ask your teacher, said Nana. So that's what Grace did. Her teacher took it very seriously and came back to class with a whole lot of stories about interesting princesses. There were real ones like Amina of Nigeria who led warriors into battle and built walls around all the villages and Ping Yang of China who started a women's army. Wow! said Grace surprised. They sound more like soldiers than princesses. And they wouldn't wear pretty clothes while they were fighting, said Natalie. I don't want to be that kind of princess. But their teacher had found modern princesses too, who were sportswomen or scientists or artists. One had even been a spy. Now that's a bit more like it, said Kester. You can be more like that, Grace. Even the story princesses the teacher found were not like the ones Grace thought she knew. There were Cinderella's from Egypt, Cambodia and the Philippines and a Zimbabwean girl called Nyasha who was kind to a snake that turned into a prince. 
Grace felt less and less like being the pink and floaty kind of princess. She couldn't imagine making friends with a big snake and wearing a sort of fairy costume at the same time. Can't there be princes in the parade? Why is it just princesses? asked Raj at lunch. And why just the pink and pretty sort? said Grace. Can't we have ones from other countries? You've changed your tune, Grace, said their teacher. I thought you loved fairy tale princesses. I do, but the others seem more fun now, said Grace. All the other children agreed. Hmm, said the teacher. I believe we're going to have to have a think again about this parade. The mums and dads and grannies and childminders all chatted at the school gates and the word soon went round about the princes and princesses. You need to decide, Grace, said Nana. Have you made up your mind what sort of princess you want to be? The kind that has adventures, said Grace. I would like to be an African one. Is there one from Gambia? Can you find me a story? Hold on, said Ma. Have you been chosen yet? Oh, no, I haven't. I forgot about that, said Grace. No harm in being prepared, said Nana. Do you know any Gambian princess stories? You could ring your papa. He might know. But Grace's papa didn't know any, and nor did his wife Jatu. It doesn't matter, Grace, said Nana. I could use some of that kente cloth we brought back from the Gambia and make you robes fit for a princess. It won't be pink, said Ma. Will you still like it, Grace? There's more than one way to be pretty, said Grace. On the day of the parade, Grace's school had the most interesting float of all. But it was a bit crowded because of all the Japanese and African and Spanish princes and princesses. The whole class had been chosen to take part. Maria didn't mind being looked at because she wasn't the only one. And Nana had made a dress for Amy too. Raj was a Hindu prince and Kesta was a sort of English knight. Natalie was like a Christmas tree fairy in a pink and floaty dress. But Grace didn't want to be that kind of princess anymore. She was enjoying her West African kente robes. Are you happy? called Nana. Oh yes, I feel like a proper princess. Ready for an adventure! Thank you for listening. Come back soon. Bye!